Hey, this is Gus Rickard. Uh, this is another Bulletproof Bodies episode. This is number two. Today I'm talking about how to bulletproof your back. Um, now these Bulletproof Bodies um, little clips I'm doing are not for people with back pain or shoulder pain or something. This is like preventing you stuff. If you're already suffering back pain, you don't want to be doing the deadlift or lifting any weight or anything like that. Some of the other stuff that I'm doing, all the, the horizontal non-axial load, loaded stuff, like everything I'll do after this one pretty much uh, can be safe if you have lower back pain. Um, but still, you know, if, if any of it hurts, stop. But the reason I'm doing this is, is to help you prevent lower back pain. Lower back pain is probably the most common pain that we see. Our, our lower back is an incredibly vulnerable area. You know, it's holding the whole weight of the upper body on thin little vertebra, it has to because it needs all the mobility that our trunk has and there are some very complex mechanisms with the abdominal wall creating pressure and the way that the pelvis moves and the way that the spine moves that allow for movement and stability to happen but to the, the lower back tends to be a place that gets a lot of issues and wears out very quickly if you don't treat it properly. But so I'm just going to give you a few little exercises that, uh, that I do that will help with, with preventing uh, lumbar pain or low back injury. The first one is a sumo deadlift. This is a really good one for preventing low back pain because it's a, it's a lifting pattern, it's a lifting technique, really. Um, <clears throat> the sumo deadlift differs from a regular deadlift in that your feet are wide and holding the bar between your knees as opposed to holding the bar outside your knees. Um, we want to have <laughs> A nice extended spinal position so you're not letting your back round out. If you don't have adequate length through your hamstrings or your hip joint to get down all the way there, then you're, you're going to just need to do the movement through the range you can do with that proper extension there. So, uh, I'm going to turn this side on so you can see. You want to have your hips doing most of the work here. Your shoulders sit in front of the bar. The bar stays right above the middle of your foot the whole time. You're going to grip the bar and try and bend it like a banana. It's not going to bend, obviously, but you want to grip it and just kind of force you it. That's going to turn on your upper back. You're going to draw your belly button in and brace your abs if you're doing bigger loads and stand. Ideally, the bar just moves straight up and down in a straight line. The more movement that there is forward and back from that position above the arch of your foot or above where the knot would be on your laces, the more energy you need, the more shear force that's created in your, in your spine. So that's the first movement. That's my first bulletproof back exercise. The next one is just a crawl. And there are a few different versions of crawls you can do. <coughs> These are really good to superset together. This is a combo that I got from a teacher of mine, Paul Czech. Um, doing a crawl while you're resting from your deadlift increases the demand on your core. It can, can be particularly strengthening and protective for all the layers of your abdominal wall and the paraspinal muscles. So the easiest crawl is just a baby crawl. <coughs> Hands and knees always moving the opposite um, leg. And the slower you can go, the better. It's just the more time you spend on two limbs, the more time that your spine is needing to be stabilized. To make it harder, you can bring your knees off the floor. Again, the slower you can go, the better. Voice check here, make sure your shoulder blades are pushed forward around your ribs there and you're not falling through your scapula. That indicates a weak serratus there. Uh, you can do forwards, you can do backwards. Backwards is a little bit harder. These are, these are awesome for shoulder joint stability as well. It's a really good overall exercise to do. <coughs> um, the next bulletproof back. Exercises. Another one that I got from Paul, and this is a breathing squat. 
And this is just a movement that we need all the time. So a breathing squat is just basically coming down like you're taking a crack and push. The lower you can get, the better. Um, this is a really functional position that all humans need and that we've always used. Um, and the difference with like a breathing squat like this, and a loaded squat, which is when you've got a bar on the back, is that here your, your lumbar spine is actually being decompressed at the bottom of the movement. The discs are, the load is taken off the discs. But just having this mobility through your hips and through your groin and your knees and your ankle takes a lot of stress out of the low back because if your hips are so tight that they can't move, you're going to have to move excessively through your low back and that's a common cause of back injury as well. <coughs> Next one is a side hold. Um, so this is a Swiss ball on a wall. You're basically, you're jamming your heel in against the wall on a nice straight line from your heel through your hip to your shoulder, your belly button's drawn in, just holding yourself at this 45 degree angle. You're going to build up to a three minute hold. So you just do, usually start people off from 30 seconds on, 15 off, for six reps, and build up to doing one hold for three minutes over the coming weeks. You can progress that into a side bend where you're still just keeping your pelvis locked in and you're crunching in your ribs and your pelvis closer to each other as you come up and stretching this left side out as you lower down. Um, always do both sides unless you know that you're weak or all your students on one side. Um, my last bullet for the body's movement for today. Is a uh, actually I'm not more. Is a hip extension. This can be done on the ball or just on the floor. On the ball, get more range of motion. The idea here is that you're strengthening your glutes as you lift. You want your hips coming straight up and rotating your pelvis back to get maximal contraction in your glutes. You're going to engage your abs here as well to get that backward tilt at the top of the movement. As you come down, you're tipping your pelvis forward, letting your hips come straight down. A lot of the time you'll notice your knees wanting to come forward, that's your quads trying to do the work. Don't let that happen. Do it with your hips here. Breathing on the way up and out on the way down. Simple. If you don't want to do it with a ball, if you don't have a ball, you can just do it like that. And the glutes are a really important stabilizer of the low back and pelvis, <clears throat> and they're really often inhibited um, due to being seated all the time and not using them properly and having other muscles like the hamstrings or the rec fem or the psoas that are too tight, the glutes get inhibited. Um, the last movement I'll do is another one of Paul's, and this is alternating superman on the ball. So you want to rest on the ball with your back in extension, especially if you've got low back pain. Like keep, it, keep it nice and stable there. Again, if this hurts, just don't do it. You just bring one arm and your opposite leg off the floor, your arms out at 45 degrees with the thumb pointing at the ceiling. And your leg is coming straight up to, to, to uh, activate the glute. So this is a great exercise for Multifidus, which are these little tiny paraspinal muscles that kind of crisscross up your spine and prevent it from rotating and moving around. When you're doing a ball because it's an unstable surface, those muscles are forced to be upregulated because if they're not, you're going to fall off the ball, your spine wants to twist and rotate, and so those, those little stabilizers have to turn on. Um, I usually do them, I'll do 10 second holds for two minutes, 10 seconds each side, do a few sets of that. So, yeah, any, any, um, any time you're suffering from low back pain, you know, don't just go and try stuff because most of the time it's gonna make it worse. This is, is to prevent it from happening. You can usually try, like you could try some of these movements, but if, if it exacerbates or if it doesn't make them significantly better, 
then uh, go and see someone about it. But uh, these are a great movements for everyone to do just, just to add in to your workouts, just to, to do something a little bit different. So that was Bulletproof Backs. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time for Bulletproof Wrists.